Hey guys, and welcome back to the Wandering Wind. And I wish um you and your family a very merry, happy, healthy, and safe Christmas. But I'll tell you what, there are some people out there that are having the worst Christmas that they could possibly have. I'm talking about the homeless because currently right now in Ohio and in many of the states around this area. We are experiencing a winter weather emergency. Um, right now, the actual temperatures in our area are six degrees below zero, while the wind chills make it a balmy negative 39, 38 degrees. So, yeah, um, if, the, if you didn't tell, if you couldn't tell, that was sarcasm. But, you know, it is what it, it is. I mean, but, okay, so we've got a problem with this. Because, honestly, there are so many people out there that are unable to find room and shelters. In our area, we live in a rural part of, part of Ohio, and so... The local government and the local city see fit to have a total of about 10 rooms available for homeless shelters. About five or six rooms for the, well, no, about eight or nine rooms for the women, women's shelter here, and then like four or five rooms for the men's shelter. Because, of course, women do take priority in, in many of the many of the publicly viewable projects that the government puts on because, um, you know, statistically speaking, women are more likely to suffer from spousal and um, just um, domestic abuse. And so, of course, they need, they need a space to go to. But also, men need a place to go to as well. I know of a guy right now who's trying to struggle to be able to survive because his family, his friends, no one either will or can take him in in order to give him a space to sleep for the night so he's out of the cold. He's sleeping in his car, spending who knows how much for gas just to be able to keep his car running and keep his heat on to be able to at least take off the worst of the cold and keep himself from freezing to death. And unfortunately, that's the reality in, in, in a good part of America is that during the winter weather, during the winter months, if you're homeless, you got a 50-50 chance of making it through the season, depending on how bad the weather gets. Because there's not really any incentive for, especially for the government, to actually put anything into effect that would help the least of these. That's partially why I want to start expanding my Rest Road Church ministry thing because I want to start to not only help those in addiction and those in the, the worst possible scenarios that they can get into as far as being addicted to things that will eventually kill them, but oftentimes hand-in-hand hand with addiction comes loss of housing, loss of income, loss of livelihood, even loss of property because honestly, when you're addicted and you're seeking your next fix, you'll do anything you can in order to get it, including selling pretty much everything except for the clothes on your back. And even then, I've seen stories of people that have walked around shirtless because they've sold that in order to get a fix. And it's sad. It's sad. And that's why I want to help. But we also need to demand reform. because. Exposure to the elements is one of the leading causes of death among homeless individuals, male, female, adult, and child. I mean, there are homeless children out there because they're getting thrown out on the streets by their parents because something or other doesn't agree with them, so they decided to just get rid of their problem instead of helping their child through the problem. It's like, but, you know, 
I don't say this lightly, but we need to we need to as Christians, as Americans, as common citizens, actually get to the point that we're do, we're doing more to try and help. I do everything I can. I I I look for resources to sh- share with people that are struggling and might not make it to tomorrow without a place to stay. Because I don't know, there's just so many people out there that need the help. Problem is, there isn't much resources out there. It's because there's no money in it. There really isn't. Let's be honest. When have you ever seen an entrepreneur or a uh, philanthropist do something purely out of the goodness of their hearts in the modern age? It's very few and far between. Usually it comes with some strings. Usually if you see a politician doing the work of philanthropy, it's so they get a photo op. It's so that they can look good in the public eye. Or if you see somebody that owns a business also giving stuff away, it's because that brings more business because of how it looks. Optics, the way the public views your company, views your persona, views you, is more important to them than, than actually doing good. The Bible talks about this a lot, actually. It talks about not allowing your left hand to know what your right hand does when it comes to giving. It's talking about don't publicly broadcast. Hey, look how much I gave to the church this month. Hey, look at all the homeless people I helped. Hey, look at this. Hey, look at that. It's not about how you look. It's about doing the good thing. It's about doing the decent thing because you know it's decent to do. You're doing good because you know you should, not because you're going to look good. Not because it's going to help your image. Not because of any of that. I look at the world today and I see so many people that are just desperate for help and yet no one's no one's reaching out and saying here have some bread i mean yes there are few and far between yes the the, the movement is growing but two percent of america compared to the other 98 percent actually doing something to help isn't exactly helping much and i'm sorry to say that we're the problem i'm the problem you're the problem the system's the problem. People participating in the system is the problem. And why? It's because we do this day in and day out. One after another, we go into the store, we buy what we want, we come out of the store, we pass a guy on the corner of the parking lot holding a sign saying, we'll work for food. And we think nothing of it because we think to ourselves, and I've done it too, the next, di- the next guy will help. The next person to drive by will help. And if we all think that way, if we all think that same thought, then this person will sit there for several hours praying and hoping for someone to show a little kindness <clears throat> and walk away hopeless because there are people that don't help. Now, this man that I'm talking about that I know who whose family and friends can or won't help is thankfully employed. He was employed before he lost his house or his place of residence. And so he is able to work and earn a living. But even that, he'll just go get a job, buy a house. Yeah, that's great, except for the housing market, even the apartment market. The rental market is skewed way towards profit, not enough towards just helping people. I mean, the amount of times I've looked at apartment listings in the last two years looking to possibly move and seeing the rent being as high as $1,500 for a two-bedroom apartment and as high as almost $1,000 for a one-bedroom is ridiculous. Because I'll, I'll tell you this much. The housing market is not your friend. You're not going to find a house that's going to be affordable if you don't already make enough to have a house already. People that are buying and selling real estate, people that are that are renting apartments and stuff these days are either people that are spending everything except for a couple of cents to do it, praying that next month they're able to pay for 
for groceries and stuff too. Or people who don't really need it, but upgrade it anyway. It's ridiculous how many it's also ridiculous how many how many apartments out there don't qualify for public housing assistance either. And that's that's really the biggest thing that takes me off these days is there are so many people out there in need and there are public housing programs. But if you get one cent over their limit of what they think you should be able to find in this in this country to be able to live in, then you're done. Because I tried that. I was mom had moved out and moved in with my sister, and I was looking for a one bedroom one bedroom apartment to be able to get out of here and find a place to live in that would be decent enough that I could actually see myself moving forward with. I kid you not, I kid you not, this apartment was just $10 over the limit. And the other thing was, it had utilities included in that rent. And because of those two factors, the housing authority said no. $10 over the limit, and utilities were included in the rent. And they can't have that. So they decided to just nix it. And I'm like, okay, it's fine. But what about the people that that would be the only option they'd be able to afford anyway? And come on, come on. <laughs> I even offered to pay the difference. They said, no, 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 we can't do that. It has to be based on your income, but it can't be any more than this. It's like... Okay. I mean, I don't know what else you can do anymore. It's just it, 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 days like this where the, the wind chill is down into the thirties, where the winds are the winds are gusting up to fifty five miles an hour. Where snow is piling up to about a foot in some areas, and where people are struggling to be able to feel their fingers and not get frostbite because it's another day outside of a outside of a safe space outside of a home that could possibly give them some shelter why well, i like the idea of tiny houses but you know that gets that's good that gets into even different territory because then you got zoning laws and permits and local ordinances and everything else i mean I was looking at the local ordinances in my area and the amount of hoops you have to jump through in order to be able to own a tiny house in this in this rinky dink town that it, that I live in is ridiculous. It's like even just in Ohio, you had to jump through hoops in order to be able to get a, an affordable house, an affordable living space. And that's ridiculous. So I guess I want to just say, you know what? We need to get we need to get our act together and we need to stop putting profits over people. That's what we need to do. We need to get to the point where we're not just focusing on, well, how's this gonna make me money? Because that that Jesus never did that. Jesus never cared about money. He cared about your soul. I care about you. I care about helping you live another day so you got another chance to praise God. And another chance to accept his gift of salvation. That's what I care about. If anybody else cares about anything else, I can't do anything for you, but I, I, I won't I won't stop you. I won't stop you. Anyway, that's my spiel for the day. I'm Gregory from the Wandering Wind. Hoping you're having a wonderful day. God bless you. Take care of yourself, and I hope you have a Merry Christmas. I'm gonna have a video on my other channel um for a Christmas uh sermon kind of thing tomorrow um uploading it for sunday and considering i'm not going anywhere i might stream tomorrow so i'll see you then have a great night god bless take care of yourselves love you hey guys thanks for watching the video today i appreciate you supporting the channel by subscribing and liking and commenting on my videos Please make sure to check out the description below for some extra content. 
And then also maybe check a couple of these videos out. I appreciate you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thanks again for stopping by.